Hey guys, welcome back to another video with Capitan Clint. This is the second of a two-part series where we go over the basic instruments you need to know in order to fly a flight simulator. If you haven't seen the first part video, I would encourage you to go watch that first because those instruments are more important than what we're going to talk about today. Once you've watched it and you're familiar with those instruments, come back and watch this one. Uh, if you already have watched those, then uh, let's go ahead and get started. The second part video with the basics, we're going to talk about the slip skid indicator, which is depicted right here. The vertical speed indicator, which is depicted here. The rate of turn, which is depicted here. Uh, you do not see it. It will be a magenta line when we are actually flying. And then other trend lines so there will be magenta lines here here and other places as well so we'll go over those now on the external view there are a few other gauges that we'll go over go ahead and get to the external view we're going to talk about the trim the flaps and the angle of attack these are on the internal view but they are not gauges they are actual switches so for instance, this is the flaps over here. We have our trim right here. And there is actually a gauge for the fuel in here, which you can see right here, left and right tank. So the first instrument we're gonna pay attention to is the slip skid indicator. And that's this triangle right here. This top triangle is the degree of turn that we are, or the degree of bank, I should say, that we're making. And underneath is the slip skid. So if we turn to the right, you can see it's slipping to the right. So you need to put in right rudder is what that means. And doing right rudder will keep us coordinated. Now, a lot of the time in Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane, if you make reasonable inputs, you really don't need to use much rudder. Uh, but you can go ahead and practice, do some wild turns, and try to keep the uh, slip skid indicator nice and even underneath it. Uh, winds will also kind of push you off course, and that's another reason you may need to pay attention to the slip skid indicator. But for coordinated flight, you do want it to be a perfect triangle. It will move back and forth. Uh, but you want to keep it as close as possible. So here we are in a steam gauge version, and this is the slip skid indicator here. The ball needs to stay within these two lines right here. So I'm going to make a, a dramatic bank, and you'll see the ball going out. This means I need left rudder. So add left rudder to make it coordinated, and it should go right in the middle there. And same with if we go on the right side. Add right rudder, and it will go in the middle there. All right, the next instrument we're gonna pay attention to is the vertical speed indicator. And just like the name says, it tells you how fast you are going up or down. So this is it right here. Let me zoom in so we get a good look at it. So as you can see right now, we are doing a negative 200 negative 300 feet per minute descent. So that's what the number represents, is feet per minute. So negative 200, negative 300 feet per minute. In one minute, we will be 300 feet below. Uh, that's the same for a climb. We can come up here. Let's shoot for a 500 foot climb, which would be right here. 500 feet per minute. And there we are. As long as we hold that, then in one minute, we will be 500 feet higher. Now, one thing to know is your altimeter is the first thing that you should look towards uh, to decide whether you're climbing or descending. The vertical speed indicator actually lags behind a little bit. Uh, I don't know if it represents in Microsoft Flight Simulator that way, but in real life, that's how it is. You want to pay attention to your altimeter first and then look at your vertical speed indicator. This is more for having a coordinated descent or a coordinated ascent. So here's our steam gauge version of the vertical speed. As you can see, it's in hundreds of feet per minute. So if we're on zero, then uh, we are straight and level, not descending or ascending. Now we are in a descent. There's 500 feet 
per minute. Let's come up to a climb. Here's 500 feet per minute in a climb. And it works just like the electronic version, but it is a dial. And you can also see the vertical speed indicator on the external view. So here it is right here. Uh, the black area shows you exactly how many feet per minute you're ascending or descending. So if we pitch down, we get that negative number. So negative 900, if I keep that, then in one minute we will be 900 feet lower. If I pitch up, we'll have the positive number. And there we go, like 900 about right there. If I hold that number, we'll be 900 feet higher in one minute. So that, once again, that number is feet per minute. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the trend vector lines. And trend vector lines are on several different instruments. We have one here, if I pitch up, the altimeter will show a trend vector line going up. The airspeed indicator will show a trend vector line going down. And if we were to bank left, the trend vector line will come in for the heading indicator. And what the trend vector lines tell us are where we're going to be in six seconds from now. So if I get this magenta to the 4,100 right now, six seconds from then, we will be at 4,100. That is if you keep the attitude and power setting that you have. Every input does change this. So you can see pitching up, it goes up, pitching down, it goes down. And same with all these other settings. Now the trend vector lines are not the first thing that you should look at for identifying if you're climbing, turning, or whether you're slowing down. Um, they are references, but they're not the first place that you should look. One thing I wanna mention before we move on is that these trend vector lines do not show up on steam gauge instruments. Now, for the heading indicator, the trend vector line actually represents something else as well. So it tells us where we're gonna be six seconds from now on a heading, but also these marks on top I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so we're nice and close here. This is as far in as we can go. These lines here represent rate of turn. This is a half standard rate. This is a standard rate. A half standard rate is one and a half degrees per second. A standard rate is three degrees per second. Almost everything that you do in instrument flying is going to be standard rate. So this is the one that you're gonna to wanna to pitch for. So three degrees per second. That means in one minute, you're going to be 180 degrees in the opposite direction. If you were to stay there for two minutes, you'd be 360 back to where you were. So standard rate, half standard rate. For the rate of turn in a steam gauge version, you're gonna come back to the slip skid indicator and there you'll also find the rate of turn. Let's go ahead and zoom in here and take a look nice and close. So standard rate is this line right here. So you get your airplane. If we want a standard rate to the left, that's where we want to be. That'll give us three degrees per second. If we want a standard turn to the right, then we want our wings to line up with this line down here. And that would be a standard rate turn to the right. Now for the trend vector lines, they don't actually show up on the external view. So we can see our airspeed indicator here. If we pitch, there are no magenta lines going up and down. Same with our altimeter. There are no magenta lines going up and down. However, for our heading indicator, we do have the rate of turn. We've got the half standard and standard, and it will tell us, like I said before, the trend vector. So six seconds from now, we will be on the south heading. And the trend vectors aren't things that we really pay attention to much, but the rate of turn is something that we pay uh, a lot of attention to. So I imagine that's why 
they chose to have the trend vector line for the heading indicator, but not for the altitude and airspeed. Those ones aren't as necessary. So the last few instruments we're gonna talk about are the angle of attack, fuel, flaps, and trim. The main reason I'm gonna go over them is because they are on the external view and some of you may be wondering what they're for. Uh, they are not quite as important as the rest of them. Uh, the angle of attack, all you need to know about this is that when you get into the red, you're about to stall. So I pulled the power out, I'm gonna start pitching up and you're gonna see once we get into the red, we're gonna have that stall warning horn go off. And there it is, we are stalling. So if you're in the red, put in the power, level out. That's really all you have to know about the angle of attack. Some airplanes do have it on the inside, but most uh, just have it on this external view. The next is fuel, it's self-explanatory. We have 16% left. Uh, we're in the yellow, so it's getting pretty close there. There is a gauge on the cockpit view, so let me go ahead and change over to that. I'll show you what that looks like. Cockpit view. And here we are here. The right is almost out, left is full. And we've actually been transferring from the right to the left. So that is why. And in this particular aircraft, it, it goes off of the left tank. So even though that's there, that's all right. We just need the left tank to be full. In a steam gauge cockpit, the fuel quantity can look like a lot of different things. In this one, we have two LED circles. Here's five, here's 10. So this is about seven and maybe eight, between seven and eight on each tank. So this would be the left, and this would be the right. Uh, there's also versions where uh, it is a dial. So kind of like the vertical speed or the altimeter, uh, it has a single, arm that goes back and forth. The next two on the external view, the flaps and the trim, they're not really instruments. So that's why I say they aren't as important because they're not instruments. They are important, but they don't show up as instruments except for in the external view. So flaps, they decrease your speed and increase your lift. So when you put in flaps, you'll notice that the airplane bubbles up and the airspeed goes down. You use them when you're landing or taking off. The first notch is used for takeoff. The second notch is used for landing. So let's go ahead and go to takeoff. You're gonna watch, watch the airplane bubble up and the airspeed go down. Here we go. There he is and it bubbled and the speed is decreasing. Now we are in takeoff. Let's go ahead and do it again into landing configuration. Slow the aircraft down a little bit and watch as I put it in. There's a bit of a bubble and the airspeed is really dropping. So this allows us to come in for a nice slow landing. And that is the flaps. The next one is the trim. And again, it is not an instrument, but it is depicted as one in the external view. It is important. What it does is it relieves your stick or yoke pressure. So every once in a while, you'll find that to stay straight and level, you have to hold back on your yoke or your stick. So right now I'm actually pulling back on my stick in order to stay fairly straight and level. What I wanna do is turn the trim to nose down so that I don't have to do that. So with the buttons, you can go ahead and move it and you'll see this arrow begin to move. I'm gonna move it fairly fast and it shows us down. Now I did it way too far. So now to stay straight and level, I have to pull back on the stick here we are kind of straight and level, but I'm really pulling back on the stick. So let me go to nose up in order to relieve that.
And there we are, right about there. And there we are, right about straight and level. Now you shouldn't be using the trim to pitch your airplane up and down. You should be using your stick or your yoke. The trim only relieves the pressure once you're straight and level. Thanks for joining me on this video. These were the basic instruments you should know in a two-part series. If you didn't watch the first part, I would suggest going back. Those instruments are more important to know, especially if you are a brand new flight simmer. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. If you found something that you don't think was quite accurate, go ahead and leave it in the comments as well. I'd love to double check that and make sure that everything is good to go. Once again, thanks for joining and enjoy the skies.